everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a lovely day today. So for today's video, I'm gonna be doing another Am I the Arsehole video. I loved filming the last one and apparently you guys loved it too because it's probably one of my best viewed videos that I've filmed <laughs> recently. Um, yeah, I've been obsessed with this thread, thread page on Reddit. I'm always on there. <laughs> because I'm nosy um but yeah I guess let's just get straight on into it and read some of these stories am I the arsehole for refusing to change my unborn daughter's name oh dear <laughs> for context my brother 34 male and his girlfriend 28 female have been together for eight months and my brother has admitted it's already getting a bit rocky and he's debating leaving her after a few months of trying me 27 female and my husband 28 male are pregnant with our first baby i am 20 weeks along and have been very unsure about a name for our baby girl until two weeks ago at first, we were hesitant about being public about the name as I know disagreements can occur. I won't lie, it's a pretty basic name, but it's his late grandmother's name and a name I had already liked, so we went with it. Just a bit more context, my husband lost his mum at eight years old and his father was never really present, so his grandmother became his caregiver and was a massive part in his life. We started dating at 14 and 15 and from the start I was open about my home life not being the best and she welcomed me in her home whenever I needed. She was also a massive part in my life and helped me get through my abusive parents. We are now on better terms. She also helped me with bullying and we always had a good relationship. So this wasn't just a name I was going for, for my husband. We both loved the idea of our baby girl to take the name of her great grandmother and to wear it with honor. And to, sorry, and to wear it in honor of her. After we announced the name, my brother's girlfriend flipped. She stated that was her late daughter's name from a different man, not my brother, so I had no idea that was her name. My brother just informed us her daughter had passed last year and to be careful on those sorts of topics around her, but the name was never brought up. She immediately demanded we change the name and said the baby wouldn't care. I explained it was also in honour of my husband's late grandmother and it had real meaning to us and we didn't want to change it but she insisted she couldn't hear her daughter's name especially not on another child. I understand it must be so hard but the name has meaning to us and if I'm being honest if she was genuinely a part of my family I may have considered it but my brother wasn't sure if they were forever. I offered for them to come up with a nickname we could use around her if she desperately didn't want to hear the name, but she refused and she said she doesn't care about whose grandmother is dead. She had it come in, but her daughter still had her whole life ahead of her and called me an inconsiderate cow. My brother broke up with her on the spot and now all my friends are saying I took it too far, but I really don't see how, so am I the arsehole? oh my god that is a tough one if i'm being honest i don't think you're an asshole um i feel like you know the name has meaning to you you didn't realize that her daughter that had passed had that name and you know if your partner's brother doesn't think they're going to be together forever i don't think you should reconsider the name. At the same time, I feel so sorry for the girlfriend because that is a hard situation to, to be in. Um, but I feel like this might be a bit controversial, but I feel like she doesn't really have the right to tell you, you you can't name your daughter that, especially when the name has meaning to you as well. I feel like if it was just like a super pretty name that you found and it really didn't have any meaning, then yeah, I think you should change the name. But the fact that it is his grandmother's name and you both had such a nice relationship with her, I really don't feel like you're out of line here. I mean, you guys will have to let me know in the comments, but I... I don't actually think she is the arsehole in this situation. Am I the arsehole for keeping a gift card I received when purchasing a gift for someone else? For our wedding anniversary, I brought my husband a $200 rangefinder. 
The store was running a promotion where you'd get a $50 gift card with the purchase. My husband knew about the deal, so when I gave him the gift, he asked where the gift card was. Since you couldn't use the gift card on the original purchase, I used it to buy him a Christmas gift that he won't get until December. He said it left an icky taste in his mouth because I told him I spent $215, but he thinks it only counts as $165 because of the gift card. For context, my card was charged $214.99 for the rangefinder. I explained that I used the gift card towards a separate $215 Christmas gift. So technically, I've only spent $165 on Christmas so far. Here's where I'm confused. When I asked him for additional gift ideas, he told me I had spent enough, but later he said he was expecting to get the $50 gift card with the rangefinder, and that's why he originally said I didn't need to get him anything else. For our anniversary, he got me a necklace on sale for $190 and a Lululemon bag for $40. Now I'm feeling like crap, and I don't know if I did something wrong or if I'm overthinking it. Am I the arsehole? Edit. I know the cost of items because he had me order them online for him to give to me. I wasn't tracking the amount. I was just trying to provide context for how he might see the situation. Okay, first of all, I feel like monetary value of gifts shouldn't even be um, involved. Like you brought somebody a gift, that's that. I feel like the price shouldn't matter. Like if I brought my partner something for 50 pounds and he brought me something for i don't know say 70 pounds he wouldn't feel like he drew the short straw if that makes sense um it's just a gift like it's still a nice thing i hope that makes sense um secondly i don't really feel like you're out of order at all <laughs> if anything i feel like you were kind of smart like you got this 50 dollar gift card that you you know you wasn't really expecting to get so then you used it towards a christmas gift which would help bring down cost i don't really feel like that's a bad thing you would have brought the christmas gift anyway whether you had the gift card or not um yeah i don't know i i'm a that makes me feel icky on his behalf because realistically i don't know why he would get an icky feeling about that why does it matter that you know you got a gift card and didn't give it him he didn't you didn't buy the rangefinder just to get the gift card to give to him i don't know let me know what you guys think of that but i i don't think she's an asshole there <laughs> oh, this one is gonna be controversial i can already feel it Am I the arsehole for telling my wife that she needs to get over me missing the birth of our daughter? I already have opinions. <laughs> I work in a job where there are certain times that I do not have access to my phone or I am in the middle of nowhere. These times are well scheduled in advance and basically take up my whole day. There are a ton of safety regulations I have to follow during this time. My wife was pregnant and at the time I planned to take off work near her due date. Unfortunately, she went into labour early, about a month early, and I was on an inspection. I only learned about her going into labour when I got signal again. By the time I got to the hospital, she had already given birth. This was about one and a half years ago and I am an involved father. The issue is every single time we have an argument, she will bring up that I missed the birth. It happens almost every single time from serious arguments to what fast food should we get. Today was the breaking point. We got into an argument about her wanting to change the daycare situation. She wants to change the daycare to one closer to home. I do the drop off and she does the pick up. The only one closer to our home is too expensive and we cannot afford it. In the middle of the argument, she pulled out. I wasn't there for the birth again. I told her she needs to get over that and stop using it every time we have an argument. She called me a jerk and I left. Am I the arsehole? Okay, I feel like that kind of changes things. Like, realistically, obviously, I think it's not always well known but from i think 36 or 37 weeks you're considered full term and you can go into labor whenever so 
you're kind of always supposed to be on lookout from that point but at the same time you can literally go two weeks over so it's it's kind of hard for men to book that time off because most companies only offer like a two week paternity leave and I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of companies don't even pay for paternity leave but yeah I feel like you couldn't really help it I'm not even gonna lie at first I was like wow what an asshole but if you didn't have access to your phone and you know how were you supposed to know she was going to go into labor? I don't know. I really don't know how I feel about this. I feel like she shouldn't keep throwing it in your face. She's probably hurt that you weren't there because labor is like such an amazing thing. And obviously it's something that you've missed out on. But honestly, you probably have like, you know, you probably feel guilty for not being there yourself. Like you'll never be able to experience your daughter's birth again. Like obviously it's only going to happen once. Um... But at the same time, it's not like you did it on purpose. I don't know. I feel like that's a hard one, really. I've, I feel like, I feel like she needs to stop throwing it in your face. I really don't feel like you were an asshole for missing the birth. I can't lie. I, I really don't. Especially not like, because you, it was just out of your control. Yeah, no, I don't feel like you are the asshole there that's my opinion let me know what you guys think um i think i'm gonna find one more that's a little bit more light hearted am i the asshole for refusing to give up my bedroom to visiting family members i'm a 30 year old single woman in a few weeks i'll be moving to a new city in a different state for work i'll be moving into a small one bedroom apartment a little over a week ago my older brother his wife and i made a trip to an ikea store to check out some sofas I was looking for a lightweight sofa for the new apartment that could easily be dismantled and moved around by myself. I found a sofa that fit the bill. Both my brother and his wife also agreed it was a nice sofa and that I should get it online and have it delivered. A couple days later, my brother and I were talking about my move. At one point he says, you'd better buy a pull-out sofa for when we come to visit. I was surprised. I told him I had already decided on the sofa that we saw in the Ikea store but that I'd make up the sofa nicely and also get a sleeper mat to put in the living room for them. My brother gets offended and says, no, if we're coming to visit, you should either have a pull-out sleeper sofa or give up the bedroom. I get upset and tell him that it's really unreasonable to put demands on me as to what furniture I should buy, where I should sleep in my own apartment. Basically, we start to argue. He tells me it makes no sense to have a couple sleep in the living room in a one bedroom apartment. He tells me I shouldn't be so attached to my bedroom. I tell him that I'm not the type of person to visit someone's house, either family or friend, and make demands about sleeping arrangements. Then the argument starts to get heated. He tells me I'm being an absolutist. He tells me I put too much emphasis on my own comfort. He tells me that I'm not being considerate of the fact that he's married. I tell him that I feel like I'm being penalised for being single. I already deal with family members who infantilize, I think that's how you say that, and condescend me. They don't see me as an adult woman deserving any respect. And so I'm always expected to compromise and be the peacemaker. Ultimately, after nearly an hour of arguing, my brother and I apologise to one another. We are both really close and neither of us like to fight. Basically, my brother resolved that if he comes to visit by himself, he'll sleep on the sofa, but if he comes with his wife, they'll stay elsewhere. I told him that I would look at some sleeper sofas since I hadn't put in my IKEA order yet and also said that I respect that he and his wife may not stay over with me when they come to visit. Truthfully, I still feel hurt. Even though we put the argument to rest, I just want to know if I'm truly being selfish and unreasonable. Obviously, there's a logic to having a couple take the bedroom, but I'm also tired of always having to compromise. Edit. I do not live with my brother, I live on my own, but we live very close to each other, around 15 minutes away. We see each other all the time. Now, for the new job, I'll be moving six hours away. Also, I realise how ridiculous it is to have an argument based on hypotheticals and over a sofa, no less. All I can say is that we are Asian American and we grew up with emotionally immature parents. We grew up walking on eggshells. I think we both developed this strategy of gaming out and 
talking through every possible scenario. There's definitely more emotional baggage behind this conversation. As the single daughter, I've become the default caregiver to our boom of parents who did not prepare for retirement properly. Our parents often say, often stay with me, sometimes for months at a time. They do not stay at my brother's place. They don't like his wife. This will likely change now that I'm moving. The two of us siblings try to help our parents as best we can financially and emotionally. We've always been close, probably because we grew up dealing with our parents' nonsense from such an early age. As adults, my brother is much better at maintaining emotional boundaries with our parents. I still have trouble with that. I have a lot of guilt over asserting my own independence. Overall though, he is really supportive of me. He's just obsistent obstinate <laughs> from time to time and doesn't always see how difficult it is to be the daughter in our family and how often I make compromises for everyone else. Anyhow, this out of state move will definitely be a new chapter for all of us. Okay, um, first of all, I really don't think you're the arsehole for setting boundaries. Like, I don't feel like you're attached to your bedroom, but your bedroom is your own personal space and I... Right, I'm gonna be honest, I cannot have anyone sleep in my bed on my pillows um, because it makes me feel uncomfortable. Like it genuinely, I, if someone slept on my pillows, I would quite literally have to go and buy new ones. Like I'm not even joking. And I know that that might sound extreme, but I can't, I just can't. It's the thought of someone dribbling and ooh, no, I can't. And it's like, you swear, oh, anyway. Also, it is your space, it is your apartment. If they've chose to come and visit you, then I feel like if they know you've got a one bedroom apartment, then maybe, I don't know, book a B&B or something, book a little hotel room for the night. I know that that might sound like, you know, a little bit excessive, but there's not really a lot else you can do with the room that you have. And like you said, you said you were gonna try and find, you know, a sofa bed, which, yeah, I feel like that is a good option. I feel like that would be a good option anyway, because then if you have guests come over, you've got room. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like you're an arsehole there, to be honest. Um, let me know what you guys think. But I'm gonna leave it there because I don't want this video to be too, too long. I really hope you enjoy this video. I enjoy filming these ones a lot. So if you wanna see more, leave a like because that really, really does help me out. Comment down below if you want to see more videos like this one. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss when I post every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. And with all that being said, I hope you have a lovely rest of your week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.